download my free legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. We have the fifth challenge here uh, for you that I hope you will spend the next week focusing on exclusively almost. Of course, you have to play songs and you have to do other things. But whenever you're playing single notes, whenever you pick your guitar up and you instead of start playing the first position blue scale shape, you do this instead for an entire week and you practice playing this shape or this challenge in front of the TV. You practice it with a metronome. You practice it if it's relevant. You practice it with uh, having um, a jam track in the background or your looper pedal. Whenever you play something with single notes, you move within this shape. That's the way to get so familiar with it that you will start doing it when you are having fun, right? Because you always get better at what you're already better at because that's the most comfortable thing to play and people, human beings are drawn towards what's most comfortable, what's easy, just the way it is. So but you have to break out of that by, you know, you know, being uncomfortable for a while and playing something that you're not used to and making that comfortable. That's the way to break out, right? Because right now, the reason why we play in vertical shapes is because we chopped up the pentatonic scale into vertical shapes so we could learn the entire big shape across the fretboard. But to move beyond that and put the shapes together, we have to actually move horizontally and vertically at the same time and make that as familiar as moving vertically. That's the cure. Okay. So let's look at the next challenge. This is really cool. This is a game more than it's uh, a specific way of laying out the scale. So let's look at it. Have you ever noticed how if you have your uh, two note per string pentatonic shapes laid out, that if you practice the first and the third, then the second will appear automatically in between. So if I'm playing the first position, you would say that, you know, the top of, you know, my, th my fourth and third finger will be playing the bottom of uh, the second position, right? All the top notes of position one becomes the bottom notes of position two, right? And so if I play the first position like this, then I just played all the notes, the bottom notes of the second position. So if I play th um, the third position, then I've just played all the top notes of of the second position. So if you if you mark that out, these two positions on a piece of paper, then you'll see the second position appear right in the middle, uh, with no extra dots, so to speak, right? So if you play the first position and the third and you go in between those for an entire week you improvise you practice you practice the little sequence i got for you and you you improvise between them as you visualize the second in here without playing without actually moving your hand to play the second position you play the same notes right you play the same notes but you never actually play the second position like this Play here, you play there, right? But if you then focus on the second position as you play and focus on the notes so you visualize as you play, then gradually they merge together like two trees growing into each other and just, you know, just merging. It works in, in, in quite uh, an extraordinary way. So that's the exercise here. So this is the first position. Let's just mark that out in the charts. First position, minor pentatonic, right? So we've got five and eight on the low E. And then five and seven on the A, the D, the G, and then five and eight on the B and E. And uh, the third position would be 10 and 12 on the E, the A, and the D, right? And then nine and 12 on the G, and 10 and 13 on the B, and then 10 and 12 on the high E again. So those two positions are marked out, right? And then the one in between, we don't play consciously, but we still play it. And then you simply go back. Every single line you play must contain both. That's the rule. So you play a line like, right? 
right? <laughs> really pushes you to play something new when you do stuff like this. So that's the rule. Um, so let me just give you an example of that again, and then let's look into the sequence. So I'm gonna play A minor here, and then A with a G in the bass, and then A with an F in the bass, and then E major. Right, and A. See, every position is used for every line. That's a really cool exercise, but let's just come up with a sequence that we can use uh, to play across these. So what I'm going to do here is very simple. You just have to get the uh, the system in it, and then it flows pretty easily. So I'm going to go from All right. That's the exercise here. If you do this enough, then it'll be natural to move in between the two positions. So let's just look at it. Um, you simply go, if you're doing that before, you can also just play four notes down to keep the system simple here. So, right? 12, 10, 13, 10. Right? You slide down to the fifth fret, hammer on, and then pull off. Right? So. Oh, let's you start with the same little 10, hammer on to 12, pull off again, 13, and 10 on the B string. Slide down, hammer on to the 8th, and pull off again. Now we go to another string, simply just by playing it, a pick stroke and a pull off. So 7, 5 on the G string. Now I shift the string, so once I shift to the string, I have to slide right away. That's the rule. So, so I go, I just shift it to another string, so I slide down, hammer on and pull off. As I slide down, I shift strings. As I shift a string, I slide up again to the new note. Hammer on and pull off. New string, down. Hammer on and pull off. New string, slide up. Hammer on and pull off. New string, hammer on and pull off. So that looks like this. Direction as well. All right, I'm just going to play it for you slowly, and we got the tabs for you uh, that you can go download. Um, so that's the exercise, that's the challenge. Always move between these two shapes and become so good at this that you can see the shape in, the, in between and this is automatic. Then you move on after a week to something else if you want to, right? Start playing the second position right here and uh, your fourth position. Right? Once you combine it with the first and you spend an entire week on the two next, then I promise you it'll be, uh, you know, your hand will move back and forth horizontally like never before and you'll really gain some new playing skills. So let me just play the two shapes slowly <clears throat> and then the sequence. So we got that down. <coughs> Excuse me. Second shape. In the sequence.
So remember to stay in one key only. I don't know if that's the A minor for you, A minor pentatonic or C or E. Most people perhaps E, you know, the first position up here. The key is to stay in the same key so you connect the dots to the um, to the position on the fretboard and then you can always move to other keys afterwards. It would be much easier. Remember, the principle of mastery tells us to focus on something that is the same over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until we're so familiar with it, so good at it, that moving it around, doing something that looks similar to it will be super easy. That's what most people never do. And when I say most, I mean 99.999% of the population will never have that behavior. That's why we, you know, except when we're brushing our teeth or doing something, you know, repetitive every single day, like driving a stick shift car, if you have one of those, right? You become so good at it that it becomes totally unconscious. That's what we need here. So please stay with this challenge for long enough, minimum a week or the next week here. Everything you do is within that shape or with, you know, doing this every time you play something. And you might want to know, you know if, if you have the strongest point in your first position minor pentatonic, you might want to pick another couple of shapes in the same key, right? You might want to pick, you know, position number two and position number five, for instance, right? And then play. And then combine these two shapes instead of moving between something you know very well already. So go download uh, the charts here, the examples, the uh, sequence, the tabs, uh, by clicking the link below the video here, and then I'll see you in the next challenge. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.